Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big yeah! one. Exactly. It's Manchester United versus Liverpool in the FA Cup quarterfinal. It doesn't get much bigger than that. Joining me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Joe Smith. Joseph. No. I mean. No. No. It's one of them where you don't need to overhype this one. Time out. Because it is. Massive. Can we offer to play this game in two years' time when things have settled down a bit under an EOS? Can we just pin it back I a love little bit? Confidence that Do you know how City get to push their 115 better. charges back by 18 months? Yeah. Compared to Everton? I think they do that every 18 months. As exactly. Well. Why can't we, whatever they do to do that, we should do that with this game? We'll play it. We're not going to say we don't want to play it. We'll just play it in 18 months' time when we've had a chance to get better and it's not going to be embarrassing. Joe, Joseph, what? You've been doing this long enough now. You disappoint me. You should always know with Manchester United. United, the worst is yet to come. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, let's get it out of the way now so that in two years' time we don't get battered even yeah, more. We can focus on the, the drama okay, we're going through in two enough, years. Fair time. enough, fair enough, fair um, enough. This could be mm -hmm. season defining. I mean, if we're out of this, Good. we're out of the only opportunity we've got to win any silverware. Yeah. Losing at home to Liverpool is going to be horrible anyway. Plus, there's the fact that they added pressure on the manager. The fans are going to be irate. They're going to be angry with certain players. They're already probably angry with anyway. I mean, it just feels like the 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 entire 23-24 campaign yeah. relies on this. Fixture. It does. It does a little bit, and especially once I found out as well that do you know the uh, the sort of European coefficient rating that decides which two teams, which two countries in Europe get an extra Champions League spot. Yes, I know it well. I only found out yesterday that the performance for that country's teams in the Europa Conference League and the Europa League are weighted just as heavily as the Champions League. Right. So if City lose in the Champions League to a Spanish team or whatever, and let's say they're out of it, but an Italian team wins the Europa Conference League, yeah. that will, they will get more points for their coefficient than City get to the Champions League final. So that worries me because Italy have got a lot of good teams in at the minute, and so have Germany. So it really could be all on this. we got to add as well that we're recording this before, is it Liverpool have got, have they got a game? Yes, well they're Spar five nil up. So if they don't Spar win that, Prague, yeah. then I'll be even more mad. So, at but we're, just in case anyone wonders why we're not referencing any of that, we're not. Also, we're recording this before Eric and I has done his press conference because we have to. Um, so we're not quite sure on the latest update on injuries, but we've got a good idea, haven't we? Yes, we have got a good idea. Um, do we approach this game then, going into it as Manchester United, the biggest club in the world? Yeah. yeah, in front of 76,000 fans, 67,000 of which will be United fans. Do we approach it in the sense that we're going to get at home yeah. from the first whistle, well, you know, from kickoff, attack, 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 and all that stuff? Yeah. Let's get into him, no surrender. Or do we go, well, no. we can't do that because Liverpool are a lot better than us, so we might have to just defend and know we can count them on the break with the likes of Garnett, so maybe Marcus Rashford get it or Has Rasmus Hoyland getting a goal. How do we go in at this one? I okay. think it would benefit us to play slightly more aggressive than we did against City. Yep. But I don't think trying to go sort of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, bang for bang with them is, is a great idea. However, Chelsea kind of did that. And Chelsea should have beaten them. Yeah. And Chelsea aren't much better than us. or I mean, <laughs> the league tells us they are, aren't any better than us. They're worse yeah. than us. And they did it. They really pushed Liverpool and were constantly trying to attack and saw attack as their best way of defending. And I think at Anfield in, uh, a few months ago, when we played them, a couple of months ago, they had a much more full strength team. They had players in there who you, you know are used to winning games and even used to winning games against United. The team now, whilst there are a couple of people coming back in, is a, is a different one and it's at Old Trafford. I do think that whilst we should be overall, you know, maybe 40, 35, 36, 37, 45 percent possession in that ballpark. I don't want to see another 28 percenter that we saw do against you know, City. Do you know what? I think no, we do sorry, need to go for it a little bit more than we did. I actually do think so. I do feel like that game at Anfield, tactically, when you look at it, I think you got it spot on because we had we didn't have the the most amount of chances. We had the best chance. Yeah. We had probably the two best chances. Yeah. And in a game like that, that's your opportunity. You, you sort of soak up pressure, you defend well, which we did, because all the shots they had were, weren't shots where you'd expect them to score. No. I think um, Andre Onana saved more shots in that game than any United keeper since David De Gea at, against Spurs like four years ago, whatever it was, or three years ago. But lots of those shots were from outside the area, relatively comfortable. It wasn't a one shot where he's made a save and you go, I can't believe he kept that out. Yeah. 
And then we had a really good opportunity. Rasmus Hoyland, I think, had a really good opportunity. Yeah. So the tactics that kind of worked. that one as well. Dan Dan yeah, not again, and his touch was a bit are, light. Those were the two best opportunities in the yeah. match. So tactically, I think Eric Tonight got it right. It's just it's difficult to get too excited over a nil nil where you go, oh, he was superb there, the manager. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't like you, you're you know you're having a parade over that one. But you think this time round we should just go for it a little bit more. A little bit more, I think. You know, understand that this isn't going to be a game where we have 15 shots. Nine on target. Liverpool have two shots, one on target. It's not going to be a game like that. Yeah. They're probably they're a better team than us. They are. So they're probably going to have as good chances as we do, if not better. Yeah. We just have to be clinical. That's yeah. a big thing of it in, in these big games, especially if you're the underdog. If we have three chances, we have to score two goals. Like you mentioned there, we had two big chances at Anfield. Didn't score either of them. Okay, no. we, you don't win. I know we didn't lose, but you just you can't yeah, win no, games no, like you're that. Right. Um, if we have three chances, we have to score two. And if we do, I think we can win. But I don't want it to be a case of, I almost worry that if we score too early, we'll see a situation against City where we scored so early that now we are so defensive yeah. because there's something to hold on to that actually by the time you have to switch it on again because they've scored the equaliser, you can't because you're so used to sitting back and doing nothing. I want this to be a game where United have to fight and keep putting the pressure on. And I do think we can win. I genuinely do think we can win. No, I, I, I hear you. I do. Um, and I, I get your point as well about that fact of being like too defensive yeah. that could go against you. You can't do that. I also think as well for the FA Cup game, and this might sound a little bit odd, but I think the fact you've got 9,000 Scousers rather than the usual 3,000, I think it helps the atmosphere yeah. for United. Yeah. I think United fans it's are more be a up for it. Another couple yeah. of things as well. It's St. Patrick's Day, right. which obviously Manchester and Liverpool's proximity to Ireland and the Irish fans in Liverpool and Manchester is going to boost things a little bit. It's also... Uh, um, because, like you said, because of the, the fans and the extra fans in there, I think they'll get the best out of the United fans that's, as well. Yeah, that's, it's going to be a true, rowdy, it? boisterous, exciting atmosphere, isn't it? Maybe yeah. even more so than usual. Yeah, I've, I remember the FA Cup game against Liverpool Old Trafford where I think Gerard got sent off and I was right near the, the Liverpool fans who were being their usual little scamps. Mm. <laughs> um, and it was it was an electric atmosphere yeah it was it was it was unreal and uh, you know obviously we won which was even better um with all this being said then give us your predicted yeah. 11. the big boy is is rasmus hoyland and i'm, I'm <laughs> desperate for him to be back yeah i think he makes so much difference and i know that it's not just about one player but when you think about a counter-attacking team and a modern team yeah he's dangerous in the air yeah you know because of his size and his height he's, he's rapid so he can get played in behind he's his ball retention is far better than any of our other attackers yeah when you kick the ball up when you're clearing the ball out especially if um onana doesn't trust his center backs to play out from the back like we saw um against man city when you're going long hoyland's ability to keep the ball and bring others into the game is orders of magnitude better than any of the alternatives to him He's absolutely crucial for his physicality, his speed, his goal scoring ability. Uh, and also it brings more of, of the best out of Rashford and more of the best out of Garnacho as well because of that hold up play and the link up play he's got. If, if Hoyland starts, I think we've got a really good chance. So I've obviously put him in. The rest of the team almost sort of picks itself. Maybe you can, you know, have question marks over the full backs, but I think the midfield, the centre backs, the goalkeeper, Rashford and Garnacho are a dead cert. And for me, if Hoyland is back, which we hope he is, which the rumours are that he is, that's going to be the big difference. Yeah, no, I, c I completely agree. And the team you've gone for there makes a lot of sense to me. It is probably, you know, what you'd expect considering who we think could be fit. I mean, there's a couple of question marks that I'm going to get into in a minute when we go to my team. But that team there, we know we're missing players. The sort of front six is very strong. Then you get into where you've had to really mix and match it. Yeah. You go to my team. I think, and again, we don't know, but I think... If Wan Bissaka or and or Harry Maguire yeah. are fit, he will risk it. For this game, yeah. he will be like, You're in. Because we saw as well that Johnny Evans was struggling a little bit at the Etihad because not only is he thirty five, he also wasn't fully fit. Yeah. And he did a good job while he was playing, but it caught up with him. So I think it's better to risk Harry Maguire than Johnny Evans if that makes sense. And I, I want to see the low on that left hand side. I really do worry about Mohamed Salah, who could be back in the team for the Liverpool uh, for the Liverpool for Liverpool. So I think it might be Delon on the left and wan on the right, but again, a lot depends on whether those players are fit. Let's talk yep. about the opposition. Yeah. So, Liverpool, they're having an all right season, aren't they? I suppose mm -hmm. you could say that, couldn't you? You know, in with a shot of a few trophies and doing yeah. all right in the league, not, not doing too badly, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you look at them, 
they've got so many different players that you can sort of pick out. Who are the ones or which one is it that stands out for you? I mean, obviously Salah, isn't it? Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you weren't trying to overthink it no. or trying to be too clever. Because not only is he brilliant every season, he's a, like for Liverpool. He's also now developed into a player that's brilliant against United every time. Yeah. Or almost every time. Because he went through that spell, didn't he? Where he didn't do anything against us. Yeah. Well, like some Matty Damien and Ashley Young and all them lot kept in quiet. And then all of a sudden he just starts scoring hat tricks all the time. Yeah, exactly. So he's obviously a very good player. And I think there's a stat there. He could be the first ever player in Liverpool's history to score 20 goals in all comps seven years in a row. I mean, I don't know how many he's got at the minute, but he's, I don't think he's far off. Um, he's a, a sensational player in here, Premier League great, like, as much as it pains me to say, he's, he's phenomenal. And we can't underestimate him if he's back, because he's been injured. So we'll have to wait and see, is he back and what version of him is it? Hopefully, because of the fact that if he is back, he's probably not going to, well, he's, not, he's certainly not going to be at peak fitness. Maybe that 5% drop, 10% drop um, from the fact that he's just coming back in can be the difference for United. But if we keep him quiet, and I think Darwin Nunes is another one who last season, I think everyone gave him a bit of stick. But as I always say with, with every transfer, you can't be a failure or a success after one season. No. Unless you've won someone a treble. You know, Haaland could have left at the end of last season and it would have been a success. But typically, no matter how good or how bad a transfer seems after the first year, there's a reason you sign a five-year contract, and he's proven now that he's a very good player. Um, so he'll be a big one to watch as well for Liverpool. But I just think Salah's the one where, if he's playing, I think the game shifts. And if he's at his best, sorry, I think the game shifts back towards Liverpool again. No, I completely agree. I think he is an amazing talent, unfortunately. And now he does seem to have our number a little bit done he yeah. so look at some of the games he's had more recently against United it, it does worry her. and the fact that even when we've had someone like Luke Shaw starting it's been horrible yeah. let alone with you know your third or fourth choice left back which we could end up with yeah. uh, come Sunday afternoon so I do really worry it's not just Salah obviously they've got all the good players but he's the main man and that record of you know potentially 20 uh, sorry seven consecutive seasons with 20 goals is, is ridiculous mm. um, with all that being said then mm -hmm. give us your score prediction and don't forget as well just before I get Joe's score prediction I want your score predictions Film yourself in landscape. Send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. We want a 30-second score prediction, and we'll use it as part of our pre-match build-up for the watch-along this Sunday. Give us your score prediction, please, brother. Um, I think it'll be closer than, the, obviously, like the 7-0 and stuff last season. Or the five nil at Old Trafford, or <laughs> that's whatever. comforting, isn't it? It'll be closer than I that seven goal battle. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> I think I think the cup element of it yeah. just sort of naturally kind of draws the two teams together yeah. because the difference between them winning seven nil and three nil in terms of the competition is is zero. There's no goal yeah. difference. There's no carrying it into the next one. So. I think the, their impetus will be on winning yeah. more than embarrassing United. Obviously, if there's an opportunity to do that, they'll do yeah. it. But I think that that automatically closes the gap. Like United City in the cup final last year. Um, I, th I think we can sneak it. If Hoyland's playing, yeah. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. Right. I okay. think just him occupying Van Dijk a little bit, maybe leaving space as well at set pieces in different transitions for the likes of Casemiro or McTominay to arrive in the box. It's going to be a horrible, hairy, disgusting game, but I've got a feeling United might sneak it 2-1. OK, fair enough. I think? actually think this is revenge time. Oh I God. think this is revenge for that 7-0 <laughs> defeat that we had at Anfield, right? It's time to get them back, to show them. Is it really the, the time to do that? In England, this. Yeah? Right. It's not you, it's us. Yeah? People are going to talk about the 7-0 at Old Trafford by United. Yeah, you're not saying seven 0 No, I'm not. Even I can't bring myself to say such <laughs> nonsense. And, you know what I mean? And I'm completely deluded. So yeah, that says it I all. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, this is deluded enough. I'm gonna go three one United just because I can't bring myself to sit here again predicting another United loss Oof. to one of our rivals because I'm sick of doing it. So yeah, I'll go three one United and Hoyland to get a hat trick. There you go. Can have there a bit of go. that. Brilliant. Um, listen, I'd settle oh, for so a nervous. stuffy one 0 win. I don't yeah, care. We beat Liverpool at Old Trafford. It'll be fantastic. Have you ever if we seen, lose to them, it'll be horrible. Have you ever seen? United in a penalty shootout have I ever seen United yeah, yeah. loads of times have you yeah any, any in particular stand out yeah there was the loss to Derby Derby County at Old Trafford remember that one there was a loss to Sunderland at Old Trafford remember that one any any <laughs> <laughs> anywhere we weren't losing to lower league opposition <laughs> um, my first trip to Wembley was the charity shield or the community shield as it's now 
Leipzig. Labelled. Does that count? Um, we beat Arsenal on penalties, if memory serves. Um, I'm trying to think. I've I seen, saw United I've seen loads in the, in the summer as a penalty shootout. I've never seen a competitive penalty shootout for United. Have you not? No. And obviously it's possible in this game, isn't it? Um, there must be. There must be. I'm, I mean, yeah, I, I can't. You weren't at Villarreal. No, no, Thank I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't even watch. I didn't even watch. I mean, uh, oh, what am I on about as well? Um, Brighton in the FA Cup semi-final uh, at Wembley. I didn't watch any of it. I faced the crowd. But um, and someone said to me, Jay, you, you really don't watch penalties. <laughs> like, no, Cheers, mate. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a jinx. When, we, when I watch them, we, we lose. So anyway, um, make sure you are getting involved luck, in the everyone. chat and the comments. Go and check Joe Smith out on Sloppy Joe's podcast. Yep. You know where to find me as well. Don't forget as well to hit like, share and subscribe. We're going to be here for the watch along on Sunday. So we want to see you joining us. That's been Joe Smith. I've been Jay Moy. This has been a preview of the big one. Manchester United versus Liverpool in the FA Cup quarterfinal. Thanks for watching.